communications. We know how important communications are for your entire career. If you're in technology, especially data science, you will be communicating with a variety of audiences. And communications, especially effective, uh, targeted, directed communications, are exceptionally important. You won't be taken as seriously. You won't be able to advance as far. You'll be unable to persuade people to do everything from fund your projects to uh, hiring you in a lot of cases. If your communication skills are lacking, there's a lot of great books out there about communication skills, about uh, sort of the trips, tricks and techniques behind effective communications. However, a lot of us don't learn that way. It's really hard to get an idea until you see it, until you see someone who points out some of the things that you're not thinking of that tie into effective communications. So in the first video, let's make you aware of different pieces of nonverbal communications. It isn't just what you say, it's how everything around you ties into the message that you're sending. So let's start with my office setup. Why do I have this set up in the way that I do? Well, I need to have a professional background, but I also want you to get a sense of me as an individual. And that's why you see all of these different elements that point to my particular personality. I want to seem a bit more familiar. I want you to have uh, almost a personal relationship with me by seeing these little elements in my office that are hobbies in a lot of cases. These make me more real, more authentic. And that's part of the brand that I represent. That is a lot of the reason why you probably follow me is because I don't really have that filter <laughs> that a lot of other people have. So the office reflects a lot of my personality and it reinforces that small piece of my brand that is so important to you creating a connection with me and to following me. When you're communicating at work, think about your environment. Think about what it is that you're presenting and the environment that you are presenting from. Is it appropriate for your particular communication style to have an authentic space that you do Zoom meetings from, that you do conferences from, that you maybe do paired programming from? Or is it better for you to have a more controlled, more sterile, meaning less going on, less busy? While this presents authenticity, it's also a bit distracting, isn't it? There's a lot for you to look at aside from me. And as you start looking at additional elements behind me, I'm challenged to keep your attention, aren't I? There's trade-offs. I want the authenticity, but at the same time, I don't want my background to be so busy that you're spending all of your time looking at elements in the background. Now, how am I dressed? I've got a t-shirt on. Is this appropriate for every audience? Of course not. You have people who expect you to look a certain way. And that look, that aesthetic, is going to be part of your communication style. I'm speaking to you informally. So, a t-shirt is perfectly acceptable because in our profession, many of us do not dress up. Many of us, especially with COVID and work from home, we dress down. That's expected. I don't lose any authority. And your expectation of me is fairly informal. So me wearing a t-shirt for this presentation is appropriate. However, it sends a very informal message, especially when I have a graphic t-shirt on. This is about as informal as it gets, isn't it? But again, it's personal. I'm speaking to you directly. And me having a t-shirt on is probably when you look at the way that you dress, probably something you're familiar with, or it may actually be appealing to you. If you have to wear a suit to uh, your Zoom meetings, I'm really sorry. If you are used to wearing a suit at the office, that's difficult. But you may look at the image of a technologist, a data scientist, see a more casual look, 
a more comfortable look that may appeal to you. So my aesthetic, my dress is intentional. However, I would change that. If I were speaking to someone in the C-suite at a very large company, very large non-tech company, especially in the financial space, I have to then change my aesthetic to match the audience's expectations. They would expect me to be in probably a jacket and a colored shirt. They would expect my background to be less busy. I would end up having the camera more focused in on my face, less of a background behind me, less of a distraction, less personable. Why? Because to my audience, that's the expectation. They want me and they are more comfortable with me being more formal. And so I would change the aesthetic, I would change my background to meet their expectations. You see me talking with my hands. I do that a lot. I have an expressive face. I use my expressive face in some videos to be a little entertaining. Some of the things that I can present are very dry. And if I want to keep your attention on me, I have to be entertaining. I have to use this expressive face. But if I'm talking to more of a senior executive audience, I'm going to use a more serious face. I'm going to keep my hands lower. At this point, you don't see my hands as much. I have a very expressive range of hand motions. But if I keep my hands low, now you're not seeing them as much. Now I'm speaking slower, more intentionally. My face is less expressive. I have changed my style, my speaking cadence, and my mannerisms to fit a different target audience. And now I'm back to talking to you. So you can see there's nonverbal pieces of communication. It's not just what I'm saying. It's everything that a person takes in when I'm delivering a message. So video one, think about your surroundings. Think about what you're wearing. Think about all of your mannerisms that are nonverbal. Think about your posture. Think about any of the type of movements that you could be making that one could be helpful, could help you to deliver your message and to connect with the audience. But in other cases, may be distracting, may be something that's less professional and that may not meet the expectations of your target audience. In the next video, I'm going to give you different speaking styles. You've seen a few examples of them through this video, but I want to intentionally walk you through different speaking styles, which will allow you to speak to different audiences more effectively. See you in the next video.